These caves are incredible. I don't even want to call them caves because it's called the, the Barabar Caves, but these things are are not caves. Does that look like a cave to anyone? That looks no. like the entrance to a spaceship. That's <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. It's like a, right. a single granite vein. One vein. huge piece. Deep in the heart of India, shrouded in the mists of ancient history, lies a marvel of engineering and artistry that continues to baffle and amaze. The Barabar Caves, a series of rock-cut chambers carved into the granite hills of Bihar, India, the oldest rock-carved caves that exists to date. What secrets do they hold? How were they built? And what purpose did they serve? Could humans really have created this ancient wonder? The Barabar Caves, discovered in the early 19th century, are believed to be the oldest surviving examples of rock-cut architecture in India, dating back to the 3rd century BC. They were commissioned by Ashoka the Great, the Mauryan Emperor who famously converted to Buddhism after the bloody Kalinga War. These caves were meant to serve as retreats for monks and ascetics seeking spiritual enlightenment. What is immediately striking about the Barabar Caves is the sheer precision and polish of their construction. The walls and ceilings are so smooth, they seem almost mirrored. The interiors are devoid of any ornamentation, emphasizing their austere and contemplative purpose. Even today, after more than two millennia, the echo of a whisper reverberates through these chambers, creating an ethereal atmosphere. The most iconic of the Barabar Caves is the Lomas Rishi Cave, distinguished by its unique horseshoe-shaped entrance, reminiscent of the Chaitya halls of later Buddhist architecture. The interior is a single spacious chamber with a vaulted ceiling, culminating in a stupa-like projection at the far end. The acoustics within the Lomas Rishi Cave are extraordinary, creating a sense of otherworldly resonance that amplifies even the slightest sound. But how were these caves built? The technology available at the time was rudimentary, consisting mainly of iron chisels and hammers. Carving into the hard granite would have been an arduous and time-consuming task. Yet, the sheer scale and precision of the Barabar Caves suggest a level of mastery that seems almost impossible for the time. Some scholars theorize that the Mauryans might have employed advanced techniques, perhaps even using fire to weaken the rock before chiseling. Others speculate that they might have had access to specialized tools or knowledge that has since been lost. The mystery of their construction only adds to the allure of the Barabar Caves. The Barabar Caves are not just architectural marvels, they are also repositories of history. Inscriptions found within the caves provide valuable insights into the Mauryan era, including Ashoka's edicts promoting peace and nonviolence. These inscriptions show Ashoka's profound transformation from a ruthless conqueror to a benevolent ruler a transformation that reverberated throughout the Indian subcontinent. But the Barabar Caves also raise intriguing questions. Why did Ashoka choose this particular location? Was it for its strategic importance, its natural beauty, or its spiritual significance? The story of the Barabar Caves is far from over. These ancient marvels hold more than just questions of technique and purpose. As we dig deeper into the mystery, we find that the caves are connected to a broader network of ancient secrets, some hiding in plain sight, others concealed beneath the surface of history. The Barabar Caves, it seems, are just the beginning. Let's turn our attention to the staggering amount of stone that was removed to create these caves. Carving out even one of these chambers would have required moving hundreds of tons of solid granite. While this might seem difficult enough today, with cranes and modern machinery, imagine doing it over 2,000 years ago with only basic tools. Experts estimate that the volume of rock removed from the Barabar and Nagarjuni caves combined is equivalent to the construction of an entire modern skyscraper. The caves aren't just hollow spaces, they are carefully engineered cavities with perfectly smooth walls and astonishing acoustic properties. This raises the question, were these caves intended for something far more complex than simple meditation? If we step outside the narrow confines of traditional archaeology, a number of unconventional theories begin to emerge. One of the most compelling is the possibility that these caves were not simply religious sanctuaries, but sites for ancient experiments with sound and resonance. Sound, after all, was a powerful force in many ancient cultures, believed to be a tool for healing, 
communication, and even construction. Could the Barabar Caves have been designed to amplify certain frequencies, perhaps to aid in meditation or to access hidden states of consciousness? Some researchers propose that the unique sound dynamics within the caves were not accidental but were the result of advanced knowledge of acoustics, knowledge that may have been lost to time. When comparing Barabar to other ancient acoustic marvels, such as the Hippogeum of Saflieni in Malta, where low-frequency sounds resonate powerfully within the subterranean chambers, the similarities are striking. In both cases, the structures amplify sound in ways that seem unnatural. Could there have been an ancient global understanding of sound technology that allowed different cultures to manipulate their environments for spiritual or scientific purposes? But even more provocative is the idea that the Barabar Caves and the surrounding region could have been used for something much more practical. Some conspiracy theorists have speculated that these caves were not spiritual retreats, but part of a network of sites dedicated to early technological experiments, possibly in metallurgy or energy generation. Ancient India was known for its early advances in metallurgy, particularly with the discovery of wood steel, a high-carbon alloy that later became famous as Damascus steel. Could it be that the Barabar region, rich in iron ore, served as a hidden laboratory where ancient metallurgists conducted experiments in the production of alloys, harnessing the natural acoustic properties of the caves for unknown purposes? There's also the curious question of why the Ajivikas, a relatively obscure religious group, would commission such monumental works. Ajivikas were known for their strict ascetic practices, rejecting material wealth and worldly possessions. So why would they need such massive, intricately designed caves? Could it be that the caves had a dual purpose, both spiritual and scientific? Some researchers have suggested that the caves may have served as a place where spiritual leaders and early scientists exchanged ideas, blurring the line between religious meditation and scientific experimentation. This theory gains traction when we look at other caves and rock-cut structures in the region, like the Udayagiri and Kandagiri caves in Odisha, carved around the same time as Barabar. While Udayagiri and Kandagiri served more as monastic retreats for Jain monks, the designs are remarkably intricate, featuring tiered halls and passageways that hint at more than just religious devotion. Could these sites have been part of a larger network of spiritual and scientific centers stretching across ancient India? There is a growing belief that these cave complexes were not isolated projects, but rather the work of a sophisticated civilization, with knowledge that extended beyond the spiritual into fields like geometry, engineering and metallurgy. Looking westward, comparisons with the Ajanta and Ellora caves in Maharashtra become even more intriguing. Unlike Barabar, the Ellora complex contains vast temple structures, including the breathtaking Kailasa temple which was carved from a single piece of rock. What ties these sites together is the sheer scale of excavation. While Barabar focuses on precision and acoustic properties, Elora and Ajanta showcase the massive scale and intricacy of rock-cut architecture. The fact that both were created around the same time period raises questions. Were these part of a grander pan-Indian tradition of rock-cut engineering that blended religion with early scientific understanding? Could the same knowledge have flowed between these centers, each site fulfilling different roles in a complex network of spiritual, technological, and social life? There are also strange connections to be made when examining other rock-carved sites across the world. For instance, Petra, the ancient Nabataean city in Jordan, shares some remarkable similarities with Barabar. Both were carved into solid rock, both involved an unimaginable amount of labor and both exhibit architectural features far ahead of their time. Petra, with its elaborate facades and hidden tombs, and Barabar, with its smooth chambers and enigmatic acoustics may have been created for vastly different purposes, yet the precision and effort involved suggest that the people who built them shared a deep understanding of stoneworking and engineering. While mainstream historians argue that these similarities are coincidental, the evidence is difficult to ignore. Were these sites merely the result of isolated advances in technology, or were ancient cultures more connected than we realize, sharing techniques and knowledge across vast distances? Then there's the question of why these caves are located where they are. The Barabar Caves are situated near Gaia, 
a place of immense spiritual significance in India. Gaya is not only home to the famous Bodh Gaya, where Buddha is said to have attained enlightenment, but the region itself is dotted with caves, temples, and religious sites. Could there be something about the land itself, something about the energy of the place, that made it a focal point for spiritual leaders and scientists alike?